Okay, in this video, we are doing problem set 47 from Calc A B. Uh, the problems and a playlist are in the description. Let's see what we got. All right, use a graph of V of T shown above to answer the questions about a particle whose position is X equals six when T equals zero. All right, find the displacement on zero to eight. So first thing I'm gonna do is just find some areas here. I'm gonna divide this, uh, the region above the X axis kind of here and do like a trapezoid. Um, or a rectangle plus a triangle. Either way you do it, I think you get an area of three. So it's like a rectangle that's two by one and then half of a rectangle that's two by one, so three. And then um, this other region is like half of a square that's two by two, so that would be two. So overall we get five in like the positive direction or up um, or right. So up, right, positive direction, however you wanna say it. And then the area below, uh, first we have half of a rectangle that is two by one, so that's negative one, and then a full rectangle that is two by one, so two. So overall we get negative three. All right, we're gonna use that kind of a lot, I think. So for displacement, if you think about it, you move like five to the right, and then you move three to the left. So overall you've just changed position by two at the end of the day. So that's what we're gonna do for our displacement. So displacement, we got our five minus three, which is obviously two. Um, displacement could be negative, so the answer could have ended up negative, it just doesn't here. And uh, one way of thinking, we're going either right or up, five, and then immediately we're going left or down, three. So, you know, five, and then you cancel out three of them, you've only changed by two. Um, find the distance traveled. So remember, di distance traveled is harder to find than displacement. Not really in this case, um, because, you know, we have all the numbers in front of us. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say, you know, I'm gonna take the absolute value of all the displacements. So what I'm gonna end up doing is the five plus the absolute value of the negative three. So it's like, you know, uh, how, how much did you actually, like how many, I don't know, if you like go out for a walk, you would have walked like eight miles, even though you walked like five miles in one direction and then three miles back. Um, I don't know if that's not a really good example of that, but uh, that's our distance traveled. All right, next up, when is the particle farthest to the right? Okay, and then we wanna justify this. So I'm gonna use a candidates test on this. Um, so to use a candidates test, I need uh, our function to be continuous, which it definitely is. I'm not gonna justify that. Um, I'm just gonna say position is continuous. We know that position is continuous because the velocity is continuous, which means the position is differentiable, which means the position is continuous. I didn't feel like writing all that. I don't know, maybe I should have, um, but I didn't, so maybe you should you know, do as I say, not as I do type of thing. All right, so we're gonna use a candidate's test. So the candidate test tells us that the absolute max or min are at an end point or a critical point. So in this case, the absolute max is actually the farthest right that you're going, because I guess you're moving left and right based on the context of the problem now. Um, so we're looking for the farthest right. That'll be the absolute max. That's gonna be at an end point or a critical point. Um, and so the endpoints are zero and eight, and then the uh, critical point is four. So I'm gonna make a table. Uh, there's our critical point. That's the only place the derivative, the velocity is equal to zero. Table, we put our endpoints and our critical points. So we know that we're starting at six because it's given. X is six when T is zero. So that'll be six. And then we move uh, five to the right. So we add five to that, so we get 11. And then we go three to the left. So we're gonna subtract three and get eight. And then we're looking for um, when the particle is farthest to the right. So the particle is farthest to the right at t equals um, four. So therefore, let's go farthest to the right at t equals four. Um, an alternative approach here would be to say that there's only one critical point. At that critical point, uh, position has a relative maximum. Uh, if there's only one critical point and it's a relative maximum, it's also the absolute maximum. That would be another totally valid way of doing it, but for some reason I decided not to write that down. I don't know. Also, we're about to see that the problems are in a very bizarre order. So the next problems that we wanna answer, uh, find the location at t equals four and the location at t equals eight. We just did that in our table. Um, so I'm just gonna copy over the table. Um, we had this. We can see from the table, uh, the position at four is 11 and the position at eight is eight. So uh, I don't know. You know, you write the problems, you don't read them while you're writing them. Uh, when is the speed increasing? So speed will be increasing when velocity is positive and increasing or velocity is negative and decreasing. So looking at the graph, we can see those two intervals. So let's try to, uh, try to write that down. So speed is increasing on zero to two. 
because velocity is greater than zero and velocity is increasing. Velocity is increasing means that acceleration is positive, velocity and acceleration have the same sign, but I think we can just get away with saying V of T is greater than zero, V of T is increasing. Um, and then the speed is also increasing from uh, four to six. And the reason for that is that on that interval, velocity is negative and um, velocity is decreasing. This says V prime and that is wrong. Uh, let me fix that up. They should just say velocity is decreasing. V prime is negative because V of T is decreasing. Um, slipped by. All right, let's take a look at the next problem. So you can see as I'm doing these, I make mistakes. I mean, I'm trying to like knock out these answers pretty quickly and also it's like a lot of work. Uh, so I like do it, I look it over, I think it's basically right. And that's when I make the video. Sometimes I realize while I'm going through it and doing kind of like the voiceover that yeah, I've made mistakes. People make mistakes, that's why we're doing all these practice problems. All right, let's find the third derivative of three to the x. All right, so I ask, I ask about this a lot. Um, so the derivative is gonna be three to the x natural log of three. Natural log of three is a number, right? So the next derivative, the natural log of three doesn't really matter, it's just a, a coefficient um, or a, a constant. So the derivative of three to the x is three to the x natural log of three, and then there's already a natural log of three, so now we're at three to the x natural log of three squared, and then the derivative of three to the x is three to the x natural log of three, but there's already a natural log of three squared, so now we're at cubed, and that's the whole thing. Um, so you can like generalize the derivative of three to the x, like the nth derivative is gonna be three to the x natural log of three to the nth, uh, which is kind of neat. It's always neat when you can generalize a derivative. Anyway, that's this entire problem set. I hope this was helpful and good luck.